equation usually i don't start just to give you the to set up the format okay let's see three people's hand but mubarak is one Okay, the letter. And then we have Moika. Great. Okay, so Mubarak. Hello. Uh, hello. Okay, my question is uh, uh, as the two of the functions, there, there are some comments. Uh, for example, uh, combine all JSON files in all, all week, eight to nine. It, does it mean we combine week eight and week nine only? That's a good question. So I think as I was, I mean, take the words that we are saying really seriously in a sense that we really know what we mean. The, the codes we give you sometimes or the things are not, you know, think of them as not as in a school where everything is like designed to test you because we don't want to test you in that sense. We sometimes work on a code and then we give it to you so that you can extend and we may be wrong, you know, right? Or the code may be extracted from somewhere else. That so because we're we're giving you active projects, not dead projects. You know, it's like we're not teaching you Newton's kind of laws only, but also quantum mechanics, if you know what I mean, or you know, the next thing instead of what is already solved. We don't give you problems even we know the solutions of because nobody would ask you at work that. So just that setting that standard side, right? So it may be true, some of them may not be relevant for that, but that's why I put that guideline in the actual document where it says, okay, you know, try to do this. So if it's not asked there, it means usually if you find it, because sometimes for us, when we are analyzing, we want to understand week by week. So we, we sometimes split up or sometimes because we give one project long project instead of lasting one week we sometimes put them in two weeks like you know so week eight and week nine it's the same project that people do so in that case so for for our own analysis we probably have done um, some aggregation okay so in part it doesn't really it's not set in stone where you're not going to be evaluated based on what is written and all that, I mean, what's written is a guideline. And of course, if nothing, you should be able to perform what's written in the Google document that is clearly stated what kind of analysis we want. And there, it's not, as you can see, it's not that much detail, right? It's like, it's basically what is asking you is either week by week or in general, the aggregation of all. So in that sense, you know, it's, let's say, if you want to, like, whenever there is a, um, a channel that says week eight, nine, you can treat it as one week if you like to, or you can treat, you can, you know, you, you can't split it in a sense, but you can only split it based on knowing which date it starts and which date it ends, and then kind of split the conversations into week eight and week nine. But you don't have to do that because you don't have that much um, time, right? Does that answer, Mubarak, your question? Okay, great. And the letter? Okay, thank you. Uh, just specifically, I don't know, maybe in the, my network is disturbing me now. It's, it's good now, I can hear you. So, my question is that uh, yesterday I'm just uh, confused with a specific task within that uh, day. So, just can you help me to arrange myself on a reason day? How can I do that? So, sorry, which one? Which one? Like, make it clear. I mean that the daily activity. Specifically, I'm confused with yesterday activity, for example. Okay, so, so that. So what? What confused you? So it's written. So let me present um, the this, challenge document this, and let's see. Um, that is the specific task that given for yesterday. Yeah, I so let, let, I'm just opening so that. Uh, okay. 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 
So, so here is what is deliverable, right? Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So this is what was deliverable, right? So by deliverable, it means, you know, that uh, something that you should deliver, and that's just a GitHub repository link. So is this one not clear? So this was clear, right? Yeah. So more the tasks that you are asking about the tasks. Okay. okay. Yeah. Are we in that conversation, Belletta? So I'm, I'm not hearing you. I understand that, but it's basically on a giving content. Just yeah. uh, when we have some file from, uh, I think uh, that is from a past Slack to Slack data to loaders. Yeah. What does mean that it's not clear for me okay. on that point? Exactly. So uh, just follow up with me. So so this was clear, right? What was deliverable is clear. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then yes. there are tasks. Okay. And then there are tasks that are specified what, what you need to do, right? And these tasks are here outlined. Okay. And if you look at them, there are many tasks to do, right? So this one, so for example, the reason why, uh, so again, I, I, know, I know that it's your, you know, we know how overwhelming sometimes even the format is different and what you expect and what you get sometimes is different. It's okay, you know, it's normal, we understand that. So it's much more, think of it instead of like us, like our side being, a, you know, like evaluator and you are being evaluated, more of think of it in, in at work in any place you are going to be at work. I think that would really simplify. So in that sense, you know, for the whole week, you have task one, task two, up to task five. And for us, the first day, for me, for example, the first day, I didn't want to be like, oh, you have to complete task one. But I want you to understand that you, you are going to do task one, task two, task three, task four, task five, probably in the whole week and just only have five days, right? So how are you going to arrange yourself to be able to do that? Like how, you know, do I have to tell you that you have to do task one, to ask task two? You know, I already outlined, these are the tasks for the week, and I already outlined, just so that it's clearer, what needs to be delivered. In between, you have to fill the gap, right? And I know, and I'm very understanding, if you get confused. It's that question, the reason why you ask now, why I'm so happy is that exactly that. Fine, you know, you don't understand it because you expect something and then, you know, we're expecting something. It's called alignment. Fine, you know, but what is expected is that you know what you need to do within the week. So try to plan to accomplish as much of the tasks as possible while fulfilling some kind of, you know, the what is deliverable every day. Does that make sense, Balada? Just let's... Yes, it's clear for me. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. So again, you know, really, it's that sometimes uh, I know and I understand if I were in your position, I would be in the same place. So I think I understand if you get confused. It's just that being confused and being silent is not good. But when you're confused, the, that means usually you have to ask lots of questions until you understand it. So this is great, the letter. So the last person who was uh, putting names, uh, was that... or? Okay, so let's Musa. I think there was another one before, but I, okay. Musa? If you are talking, unfortunately, I can't hear you. I can hear your background. Okay, maybe we can come to you. So, Kibret. Yeah, yeah, sure, uh, Musa. Kibret, you can. Hello. 
can unmute and can you hear me now hello hi okay yes, thank you for your good explanation yesterday i was a little bit confused i didn't finish the uh, I didn't submit my task, but today, uh, after asking with friends, uh, with uh, colleagues from here, uh, it was a little, uh, it was, uh, the task that was given yesterday was, I was not able to understand it clearly. But when we, uh, when I see the, now the, the document, this guideline, it was easy and I was just, uh, I did it yesterday, but mm -hmm. Where can I submit the challenge? I, I didn't okay. get it, the link. Okay, so in that case, I mean, Pascaline can facilitate and can ask, can probably type as well where it is. And if you have any particular issue, the technical team can help you that the technique. So there should be, I think I have seen, it's in Slack if you, people were posting. Um, okay. So if you were Maybe unable- if you, uh, if you pin it on, uh, yeah, but it's like everywhere, like even just if you scan it, everyone was sharing, but exactly, Mulukan already now just shared on 10 x 10 and when you go there and you put your email, somehow you have to reset your, your password and this should be there. So, okay. Okay, thank you. No worries. Brooke? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, mm. at the first day it is overwhelming, but I try my best. Uh, I have one question. Can you ask me? Yeah, of course. Uh, in EDA part, which Slack message data should we load? Uh, only all data, all data, or we should select our choice like week one, week two? So it's again, you know, this is your strategy. Ultimately, you will try to analyze everything, right? um especially once you classify but at first usually you can start whichever week because normally in EDA you can select one to to check your code you know if the code works because the after that things are similar as long as you write it modular your code you know then analyzing every other channel is going to be the same you know it's that's what codes are if you write them once then you can use them 100 times right a million times whatever like so in, in part as you as you develop it's also a very small data that we give you even if you load everything any computer can handle it so it's up to you you know but at ultimately what's asked is very clear you know so if, if nothing is for example confusing you know if something is not clear so here is basically again to get to help you to show that if nothing, if you, you know, before you do this, at least you, you know, this one is to help you for yesterday, for example, to do some kind of commit, right? Because you can just change, restructure your code. This is called refactoring, right? So normally, whenever you have somebody's code, sometimes you might see it's not in a way that is suitable for you. So you can refactor it. And then, you know, that was the part. But the EDA part is very clear. So at least you can try, you know, who are the top and uh, bottom 10 users by reply count. Now you can start just one, one um, channel, but after that you can basically do it for channel by channel. Because sometimes we actually ask you like, you know, for all channels, representing channels. That means, you know, when, when you do, for example, this part of the, um, the activity, you might be looking, loading everything, all the channels, but, you tag everywhere, you know, every message based on which channel it comes from. And therefore, you will be able later, for example, to be able to use it as a coloring, okay? And the same is also here. Some of them, you probably need more than one channel to, to display so that you know it. But does that make clear again? Is it, is it, does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Um, I think then we can continue today. So I, I, I saw some question um, on the text as well. So why not short tutorial on how to copy, clean up, reuse other code? Because so far I want to follow the task instruction, but also benefit from the starter template code. I mean, this is, you know, this is the part that everybody can arrange within themselves to do it in a way that we like, there isn't one way. 
I mean, uh, we can, you know, the tutorial that on that would mean, you know, it's there are many ways. It's a, you know, the code that I gave you, for example, works for me, right? But it might not, for example, somebody else. I mean, of course, it's not highly structured and intentionally. I could have just, for example, I could have just put all the code that I gave you um, already structured in the in the class, so that I can basically be able to, you know, I have one function that says load all um, channels uh, or load one channel. Um, or I, I could have like mated for every channel, I can have one mated. And, and so in a way, sure, that would help Hussein, but it's that is, you know, that's a work, like that's a work that's uh, requested actually. So if, you know, anyone, I'm sure among you, there are people who really already got used to and edited the code quite well and it's working for them. You know, you can arrange, um, like you can ask questions and then people can help each other. Right. So, you know, one person can give a tutorial on their own to others uh, if, if you want. to. So, but I think hopefully this, uh, this one is what the discussion is about. So you can figure it out within yourselves. Okay. Okay. So I think that's, that's all uh, from this. Side. Okay. So I think somehow it's clear, right? So the point is not about particularly how the way of working, but it's like demonstrating that for work, like we're also considering ourselves as just work environment, for work that you are able to look at somebody else's code, edit somebody else's code, and then there are business questions that are, that are there, and you are able to understand that business question, formulate that business question into how can I know, how can I then translate it into code? You code that one, you get inside and you report it. You know, the whole process is exactly that, okay? So, yes, uh, Shina, it's true. So, yeah, you use exactly the, the email and password you were using also before, like, uh, for the application. Okay, so today's, um, let me then go directly. Today's tutorial. Again, you know, sometimes it's important to know what is a workflow, what is a process, what is a task. You know, sometimes if you really don't understand anything, you, you can try to form, you know, you know, visualize it for yourself like this. You are in a, in any way you, you work, you can formulate it as you are either, you know, you are producing, you are selling a product. So very simple, like in a shop, you are, you have a certain item, you want to sell it, right? So, and there are processes in that selling. First, you have to, people have to know where you are, you know, um, and they have to come and you have to tell them the price. There is a certain process. Each of these that you do, depending on, um, you know, where you are, what kind of sales. If you are in real estate, for example, the sales process is slightly heavier because the process involves, of course, from the owner side, hiring the people who sells, you know, setting the pricing and all that. From the sales department's perspective, now they are hired and they know exactly they have every information. Then they have to set up whether they reach people in digitally or you know in the street. And then to in doing that, they have to have another process which is called you know what they are going to communicate. So the communication. Then they have to print you know certain items like that that outlines you know very simple uh, pricing scheme as well as also kind of like contact details. But so these are like, you know, processes and each process has to be done in a certain way. And the, the set of processes and tasks that you, you actually then set up, normally you can to group them as workflow, right? So basically the company can have different types of workflows, but one workflow encompasses multiple tasks and multiple processes. Another one that is very suitable to think and probably really good is, you know, any production pipeline in if, whether it's a, 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 a shoe manufacturing, you know, in the shoe manufacturing, there are a number of processes that needs to be done. First part is, you know, the laser has to be cut. 
and if it's um, or a plastic or and then the other part is that it has to be in a certain shape and the other part it has to be glued in another part so you really can't see it as a pipeline and different people involved in that pipeline and then they do work right and then they submit that work and you usually are going to be as part of that you know even if you are in a software engineering business you're going to be in one part of that piece you know so the basically the operating system is done by somebody else the libraries are done by somebody else and then the applications are written by you and the applications probably if it's in a big organization will be deployed by another person and then the monitoring and the evaluation part which is like how the system's healthy or security is done by another person in in a smaller organizations you might be the one to do most of this thing together so understanding workflow in a data science data engineering machine learning engineering and generative ai each of them involve and why they are streams that each of them have a slightly different you know kind of they in general they are the same but then in in, in details they might be different okay so in that workflow says we sometimes talk we break them into sets of things that that are more or less the same across across in this case data science data engineering and machine learning engineering so i'm just going to make it like that okay so again interrupt me uh, because i like interruption and tutorials are not supposed to be um that me talking okay so you can always just if something you don't understand um you should ask so if this is much more of a higher level this is just more for your understanding sometimes it really helps to, to capture it in a simpler form what you do you know is ultimately you are you start from somewhere and that is not the end because that's never the end usually and a company exists not even if their role is to collect data just simply gathering data that ultimately they they have an, you know the, the goal definition might be very different it probably is organizing that data and selling it right and then even if it's organized you know collecting data is their main business ultimately it boils down to them organizing it and making it accessible to people to buy so you know it's it doesn't end there in just at the data the data is just you know it's the very first thing but usually that data needs to be represented and you have to know how it's represented so that to build your every other value are it's called data value chain to build the data value chain you really have to know how it's represented and it should be represented in a in a in a part so that's where data engineering in general starts and a lot more of dealing there even be before that there is actually engineering another engineering uh, that is basically um, let's say computer engineering how actually computers represent data right so but for our case let's start from that data engineering layer and the data engineering is actually really then representing the raw data at extracting that raw data and and making it accessible that raw data and that's what's just usually you know in this case let's represent rate rate is represented by a certain digital and certain other values for example this this part comes from a certain um, place okay then when you form that data value chain on top of this what you are building is meaning you associate to that data meaning and that is very different right like because when you are now starting to represent it in terms of meaning this could be that okay you know a very simple definition that this rate comes from you know a traffic light right or this rate could be a clothes like a certain you know um, a jeans that is that is red right so that association meaning just like numbers in in mathematics you have one one normally is useful but then when it has actually meaning or units um, in physics and others you call it unit but in that part you re you kind of associate meaning to it and that becomes an information so this is now a second layer of it as 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 in that data value chain and and again there are engineering around it how to organize and make sure that meanings are you know meaningful 
right? In a sense, there is no uh, problem in that representation. And then as it gets higher level, that's, for example, in this case, you know, the meaning of that raid becomes that a certain uh, traffic light on a certain street got turned red. So now context is now when you are associating to the business element of it. So now this is not just any random raid. It's just, or, it, you know, if it's a raid for a traffic light or a raid for, you know, certain clothes or raid for you know, something that relates to what? It relates to you in this case, let's call it that you are driving. And then of course it is the, the traffic light to which that you are driving into that actually got rid. So this is more of a higher level, a contextualized version of uh, that information. And that's uh, on top of that is what happens. This is called action items. So this is then, okay, so you got that information, you know, you have that data translates into, you know, associate meaning to it. And then contextualize this with us in a, a certain business domain. And now that data applies to become now your action item. So what do you do? Okay, because of that, I have to change my sales process. Or because of that, I have to basically be able to, I don't know, um, in this case, I better stop the car, right? If it's in the traffic light. So this is, you know, I hope that is clearer that how you build this data value chain is um, in this way. But this is much more of a theoretical understanding. So normally, if you have that understanding, it helps you to, you know, contextualize many things, but just have it. It's, you know, don't, don't, Actually, over and over and over, we ask you to, to think of this, to write that information, that meaning, that context, and that uh, application uh, in any data that you have. So, and another aspect that is relevant um, in actually decomposing, so this is good, in a data value chain, you understand, but sometimes to go from this to actual work, you need even a bit better form, you know, it's called frameworks. You know, what, how do you think frameworks? It's just basically, there are a million types of frameworks. Some are useful, some are probably not relevant, but there are some frameworks that are useful. We're not gonna be like telling you, okay, use this framework. But for me, for example, it helps me to think this framework when I'm thinking of the whole science, data science uh, process. And that is basically, in, you know, this was, of course, Chris Beam is the cross industry standard process for data mining. That is actually that came out in the 90s um, uh, from a German company and becomes adopted. But you don't see it when you do the work itself. Even if you do, you follow the same thing, you never may, may you may never have heard it. So, but it's good to sometimes explicitly know what you're doing and how the processes or the, the, the flow, the workflow that you're doing is kind of decomposed because usually you follow it, whether you, whether you know it or not. So what happens is that normally you have, you have to start with a certain business understanding. Otherwise, you know, even if we, we think we don't have to understand it, but your work and let to, to have value and meaning, you must start from business understanding. Why, what is the business problem that you are solving? without articulating that, without understanding that. For example, you are analyzing the Slack data. What is the business context you are understanding that Slack data? You know, you, it may not be clear for you now because it's like so short time, we gave you that challenge. Your business context maybe is passing 10 Academy week zero, you know? But that, of course, that's not true. In part, if you really want to think about it, the business value that maybe that associated to it is to be able, I mean, it's encapsulated in that, um, the GitHub repository name, it's network analysis. We want to understand, we want to use this data to extract from this data some insight that helps us about predicting who's probably struggling, which student is actually may, may be struggling, which trainee is struggling, or to be able to associate who's really putting effort. Or for us, it's really, we use it also, who's curious actually, who's active, you know? We are actually trying to extract information that helps us in selection and then also use that data in actually of course our goal is very specific which is to place you into job so what characteristics you know we have certain characteristics we are following hard work um proactivity or this curiosity and then helping others so we extract those because we believe everywhere you need that kind of habit 
So we try to extract that information. So the business context is actually that. So when you have that clarity, it then is decomposed into multiple of that EDA, multiple of modeling, multiple of the things that are that is in the in the challenge document is associated to it. So, but that first business understanding for now, you know, we don't force you because it's a very short time, but it's very essential to know because then once you know the business understanding, it maybe is written in one paragraph, but the amount of work it may require to get to the bottom of it might be two years. Right? So it's not it's, it's not like you know, you don't be fooled by the one line or one paragraph uh, thing that the business understanding can be written because it's process to ex exactly achieve that using data. Sometimes it might be a whole team's two, two weeks or two years or 10 years project, right? So that business understanding really is the key. And then data understanding and data preparation comes together because once you have the data, so this is, for example, what I did for you is like, okay, I need, I have understood the data, what, you know, one part of data for that business, the same business understanding that I have, which is to be able to measure and to quantify fairly people's contribution. I basically, you know, selected one part of data. I have, we use lots of data. One part of data is your submission. One part of data is, you know, like the GMIT. We also analyze actually, by the way, the GMIT participation and everything. We basically are data driven, just like you are, or we ask you to be. So we are, we analyze every data, like you know, uh, that we have for one purpose, not to evaluate you, but to make sure are you suitable for the industry as we understand it, and we understand based on uh, asking them, right? By based on talking to the industry. So the data understanding and data preparation is the very first part. Is that is my data suitable? Is my data sufficient enough? You know, is my data quality has the same quality to, uh, to help me in that uh, to answer some of my business questions. Once that is, once I understand that data, then I go through the process called data preparation. We prepare the data for future parts. In this case, it is modeling, you know, so that EDA component falls into data preparation as well as data understanding, as well as data preparation. In the data preparation, once you understand, you may need to do certain form of, um, you know, certain form of, uh, for example, cleaning, certain form of uh, imputing, that means just filling the missing values and many other things. So data preparation proceeds from your data understanding, does the preparation for future further analysis, then happens modeling, that's basically doing all sorts of things. And as you can see, data preparation and modeling are cyclic. Everything is cyclic here, but a lot more of it is that certain things are more cyclic than others. So once you have data understanding EDA, usually you go into data preparation and between data preparation and modeling is a very, you know, back and forth. And then once you have models, you know, quite good, then you go into the evaluation, but the evaluation really almost always tries to answer to whether it actually the models that you have produced, whether they are helpful to answer some questions from business, your business understanding. And if that is the case, and if that's useful, then you go to, deployment and you deploy so that others can use it. For example, the CEOs or the sales or whatever other department can use it. But then there is what is called MLOBs in between then modeling, deployment and evaluation. You need to do MLOs because that part is in its own uh, difference. So then you have another part that's actually decomposed in that process. Usually the data understanding, data preparation, the data extraction component, data engineering leaves mostly there. On this aspect, machine learning involves there and basically generative AI is part of exactly both, like because then now your models are in LLM or, you know, let, let's use it like GPT we might use or other image generating um, mid journey and others. And then we try to actually follow the same thing again, whether it's generative AI, machine learning, engineering, data engineering, you have similar processes. Okay. So. Then I'm going to be, you know, so this is basically you have this already shared to you. So uh, you can see it. the business understanding has certain question. It's written there. I already talked to it, so I'm not going to go through it. And then understanding the same It's collecting relevant data, describe data, explore data and assess the quality of data. And the data preparation is cleaning, pre-processing and standardization. And sometimes you 
people might confuse between their understanding data preparation. So here I outline, it is the process of exploring and evaluating the data quality distribution and relationship. Basically, this is for EDA. And the data preparation is basically once you understand the data, it's a process of transforming and cleaning the data so that it's suitable for further processing and analysis. Uh, so it's, it's basically hand in hand, both. Without data understanding, you can't prepare the data. So that's why it just follows um, from it. Again, you know, in the data understanding and preparation, you do a lot of stuff, you know, and these are some of the things that you could dimensional reduction, feature engineering, you know, kind of cleaning, estimating correlation, many things. And the modeling aspect is where, okay, now you have the prepared data. That's usually what happens is that you either store, so it, it, it is not a linear process. It's very much, it's in parallel. You may do for one model topic, modeling is one, sentiment analysis another, clustering or classification is, in this case, what, I, what we asked you, predictive analysis another one. You know, you, they may all require one type of data preparation, but you may be doing different data preparation for different things. And in that case is where it comes in the ML ops formality that's called the uh, feature store. That means you, you have to store somewhere your features for the next value so that it doesn't stop. And that feature store can be just a, a dynamic, you know, Python method or Python class that takes the raw data and gives you basically like a prepared data. Or it can be just you can, you know, you do all the, the parts, the data preparation first, you save it into a database, and then you basically then um, uh, load from that database for modeling. It's your choice, and and you know depends different depending on how. If you are doing it alone, you may do it with code, and if you want it to be predictable, and everybody has starts from the same thing, and everybody you know if it's in a bigger team, so that the roles might be decomposed. So that means data engineers do the data extraction and the data quality check. Analytics engineer start doing like that data understanding EDA part. And then the machine learning engineers or the data scientists do the modeling from data preparation and modeling layer. And then the uh, machine learning engineers then take this, the modeling part, they do also some form of checks and stuff, but they take it into evaluation and deployment. Right? So there are roles across, across different uh, parts. Evaluation is basically is really directly tied. You know, have we is every you know if you understand value data value chain or like anything it's called added value. You know, anything you do in an economics term, it's called you know value. You know, VATS for example is basically means value added. And if you don't know what that terminology is, it's everywhere. It's like, you know, because we are. Data scientists, the machine learning engineers, we are part of that economic cycle. We are measured as well how much value have we added to anything. In this case, you know, to using data, we are trying to add value to a business. So that business has a certain goal, which is that uh, we started from business understanding. So here the evaluation part is exactly that VATS component. Have we really added any value added to the business in such a way that this is valuable, that you know it, it generates some value. If the answer is yes, usually it goes to deployment. So that evaluation component is there. Okay. And deployment is now ensuring that value added is properly, reliably is um, generating value, right? So because it has whatever we did from data preparation to modeling through evaluation, we ensured that it has added value. And then the next part is ensuring that the added value is not lost or it's basically um, we are benefiting from it and that's called deployment. And that deployment happens in different ways, in report ways, and you know, many things. Okay, so that's it for, for this part. So let me see if there are questions. Yeah, it's uh, UL, it's actually, yeah, it's shared in, in the Tuesdays folder. So if not shared, we will share it immediately. Okay, so let is there any question? You can also now um, you can raise your hand. 
okay data modeling further so the data modeling so there are two things it's like i think when we think of modeling and data modeling is very different so let me be very specific okay so the the data modeling in itself so modeling is you know a generic term right so you may how you represent your data in a database can be considered as data modeling that means how are you going to structure the schema design can be data modeling you know how if there are you know in that terminology itself there are many things it's called data vault star schema these are all trying to model the data itself how to store the data we're not i assume that you are not talking there and more when we think of ml or you know machine learning or any type of modeling when we are talking normally we are talking about how to relate you know usually either uh, predictive or prescriptive type of models how can we model generate model that helps us in the future when future data comes in it actually you know gives us something if it's a classification for example you know you model a classification using one type either deep learning or some other machine learning you know k-means or you know um, and supervised learning or it could be um, svn or it could be random forest like any of that model you know suitable model you choose and then from that you say in the future when data comes in it will classify for you so that model is different it's much more in itself it was trained to to learn features and to distinguish features into a certain category and then when future data comes in unknown data comes in it will be it will be able to classify them so that's called that modeling part here in this um in the crisp dm says but data modeling in itself is something else we're actually about how to represent data because when the data becomes larger and larger, you really have to model how to store it as well. So I hope that answers uh, your your question, um, Mikias. And the modeling section, I think I Abule. I I hope that just while answering the the question from Miki, uh, UL, you know, uh, from um, Mikias that. I have explained, so it's hopefully it's clear. Yeah, so data understand EDA is you use it as as one terminology to really understand data, but also on itself to actually gain insight. It's part of sometimes when you are exploring the data, you might be actually doing so many things that that it, 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 the first component of it is of course data understanding but it might you might actually do more than that sometimes but again you know they are synonyms so i think you can take them as, as that because both of them they don't they they really don't have like one specific like like there's no boundary it's just because you are exploring so there's no boundary to it and the same is when you understand data there's no boundary so in that sense that they're synonyms uh i didn't understand ml ops in data modeling no it's not in data modeling again ml ops is a lot more in modeling like which means machine learning modeling ml operations just like devops is the fact that it acknowledges so normally there is a certain sense that um in devops code is the only thing usually we are code and infrastructure where the things that we were dealing in machine learning ops that what happens is that you have other elements to take care of as well, which are called data and models themselves. Models are, you know, in their own a new entity, a new species. So in MLOs, it tries to acknowledge, you know, that part, infrastructure, code, data, and model. So that's the operation part. So that's what's uh, and now there is AI OBS, right? AI OBS is basically in AI, there are also a certain part of it. That's that's very specific to AI. In this case, for example, in LLM, uh, in GPT, there are prompts. Prompts are becoming different in the different species in there also. You probably need to manage them differently. So uh, that's called AI ops. Okay. Is it possible to go from evaluation to modeling? Yeah, absolutely. If evaluation doesn't succeed, you go back to the modeling and, and, and also go back to even preparation, data preparation part. Maybe you can tell us again the roles assigned to each professionals on the overall data workflow. 
I will uh, review so that basically data engineering is around data understanding. I mean, basically data extraction in between data understanding and data preparation. Analytics engineering is really all about uh, just following, uh, following data preparation and data understanding that you try to basically build dashboards. Normally, they are also called business intelligence people. Basically, from that, um, they they take from whatever data engineers give them to try to provide insight at that level without even, I mean, they can do modeling, but without even necessarily modeling, um, they can give. So analytics engineering, and then the data scientists are from between data preparation and modeling. They, they couple with that. They prepare data and model and, and there. And usually they can do, you know, again, the small companies, large companies means different. In large companies, these roles are very specific, while in small companies, one person can do many of the th many of them. So that's why it's different. But then machine learning engineers usually is between modeling and evaluation and deployment. But then MLOps people now, if it's a big company, there might be some people actually that really does the deployment component. Usually they are under machine learning engineering. Hopefully, again, we can outline, I will add some slides on that. Um, okay. Normalization and data models, I think right now it's probably not a good time to touch because that's specific, you know, more on data modeling um, and these are on database design. So I think on Wednesday, probably we can talk a little bit on that and when we talk about uh, databases. Okay, and then uh, Kerot, if you can unmute and ask. Okay, thank you uh, and good morning. So my question is actually with the data understanding the data. So okay. even after understanding the business and understanding the, the data, we might face some uh, data leakage, right? Like especially for the target that the target leakage. So my question is, how do we handle this uh, data leakage, especially the target leakage? Thank yeah. You. So you mean by leakage, you mean that you don't have enough data or the data doesn't answer properly your, your, the business, you mean that? Uh, yeah, especially the, the target leakage is, is related to, uh, for example, uh, if the, uh, the if the chronology is not uh, accepted, you know, like if something comes after uh, one, uh, I don't know how to understand. Uh, I think yeah, give that example. So that, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that means you, the data is not sufficient to predict, for example, it doesn't have enough information or it's small or it's not good quality. You mean that? Like, or do you mean by le by data le target leakage is usually, I understand it to mean that the target and the data are not in the same, you know, or it's or the data yeah. is not sufficient. Yeah, or exactly. Drugs, so for example, not, uh, yeah, exactly. Past doesn't predict the future, or that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's usually it's called in the data quality and data um, sufficient or the richness of the data. So normally, you know, when I think of data, like, I think of this way: the data is nothing more other than it captures. It's a sample from a certain target. Right. So if it is, for example, if we just talk now Slack data that we gave you and our business question for that is, are we able to, is this data sufficient for us to use it to classify people as hard workers or it could be like, you know, it, will it help us? How much information does it give us about people's performance? You know, in real job, because ultimately we we are we care about that. So the first part, I can question it that way. You know, instead of without biased question, is Slack a good predictor for me to learn about people's performance in the future? So in this case, my data understanding is I form I formulate hypothesis saying like, okay, you know, do I have labeled data? For example, those people who went who had we have their Slack data and then who are now employed and we know that they really are good or they are not doing well or, or this or that. And so I can really monitor it. So that's the evaluation component, right? So 
the the very first part normally is that you formulate something and you check if the data is okay for that and then but the real evaluation part comes once you model you might still be like wrong like right? you know you basically thought slack data would give you um that people you know it will help, help you to measure people's people are helping like for example just that other people to to get information about trainees ability to help others or capacity to help others and you might realize the people who are helping are not in slack or they're not writing in slack but they're helping everybody so that basically means okay even if it's true for some it helps you it's not a very accurate measure because you know maybe there are others who are actually doing helping others without actually writing in slack so this you update your profile so that's why it's a continuous process does that answer your question Out. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so yeah. my question is, uh, yeah, yeah. The, for, what if the data we have that doesn't answer the, yeah. the model, the prediction? So yeah, for this example, uh, someone can data. help with uh, hurdle, or they can hurdle, or uh, they can uh, answer or help the others in private message. So yes. we don't have access to that. So it may not be a good predictor. Exactly. So you should be almost always exactly trying to infer what are you missing it's called in in many things it's the you know uh, hidden but you know what are what your assumption may be wrong exactly so you have to test your assumptions even if the data tells you but you have to these are that's exactly that context that exactly learning what have you been missing and that's why almost always evaluation is necessary whether it really is a predictor and at what accuracy because you know, then if you have seen people helping others, but their the slack data doesn't give you, then you know from that evaluation, okay, something is wrong. And then you go back and search what was probably the reason. And then you realize, yeah, people are doing a lot more of their communication, maybe in DM, like a direct message. So then you, you figure out and then you try to get either that data or use other data that, that complements. So, yeah. okay, hope that answers the question, Carol. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's okay. thank you. Nuriye. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. So what my question is here, uh, from the process data understanding, data preparation, modeling, and it goes directly to evaluation. If the yeah. evaluation evaluation meets its requirement, uh, it will go to deployment. But yeah. if not, it will back to business understanding. Uh, what my question is, mm -hmm. during modeling, the machine learning engineer must uh, select the right algorithm for that uh, system. Yeah. So there must be uh, back and forth between yes. the evaluation process and the and modeling. modeling. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly. Uh, uh, so that's what I'm saying. This is just a small, don't take it too serious. This is suggestive. And the really the round, you know, the outer, circle tells you everything is actually also cyclic so it's just admitting that every in every part there's like you know it's not it's just that it helps you to organize it but it's not you know it, it's just to make sense like to to make it clearer but exactly you are right in between every place you might go from modeling to business understanding you might go from data preparation to business understanding because this part is a very intensive process of ensuring value because you don't want to get to deployment and has no value evaluation is your check it has whether it has value sometimes even a bad model you deploy it because you still evaluation tells you it has some value but it, if, it, if it has some value then you go to deployment but I agree, I agree. So yeah, there are cyclicity everywhere, except this one tells you just the, the general flow normally happens. Okay, thank you. Okay. So there are some questions and we have one, two minutes. Um, so exactly, the stakeholders responsible to ensure ethics, that's basically what is also written probably in the business, like, you know, uh, but also on every role, the data scientist has a role and they have to know about ethics. That's what's really, so Kasai, it's exactly that ethics is everywhere as well, including the data engineer, analytics engineer, 
you know, and uh, data scientists, machine learning engineer, and ML ops, DevOps, AI ops, in all of them, there is a certain ethics associated to it. So it's everywhere embedded. Ethics, fairness, you know, all of that is exactly embedded in every one of them. And that's why everybody has to learn and has to know the ethics in their in their role. Right? So hopefully that answers. So it's not explicitly written, and I agree with you, it should be explicitly written as part of ethics, but that one is, let's say, you need to duplicate this one and then write for every role as well, you know, the ethical component of it. For example, in the data engineer, you know, they would like, of course, to gather so much data, but then, you know, is it relevant to gather every data, you know, their IP, their name, whatever, you know, so there has to be ethics there. And the same is in modeling and same is everywhere. Feature engineering involves transforming in order into features that can be used to train models. So data engineering, exactly. So there are some quite answers right there as well. To what extent can diverse data sets provide consistent data? It's, this is what is really, Daniel, that's what, you know, we are still, people are needed, right? It's to try to, everybody is searching for that reliable prediction, but usually there is uncertainty. And the more you understand statistics, and understanding uncertainty, you know, and quantifying that, the better you become and the better you, you give value. So that's why we still evaluate you for for also statistics and mathematics, because computer does something, but ultimately there are other fields, psychology, you know, um, communication, statistics, maths, all of these are relevant to really provide that value and to quantify uncertainty is in that case, statistics and mathematics. Yeah. Okay, so so this, I mean, I talked about this component building as MLOps, and in the MLOps, so we will refresh it maybe in the afternoon as well. Just I will share some slides, but this is why I, I you know, I knew the time would go in when I took the discussion. So we will stop now, but this part of the the DS component building, which is, um, I think you have certain, in, we haven't prepared for the Slack one, but you, because we gave you more data, more um, code this time, but you can look at some of the elements that are in the folder you will be sharing, that's for um, Twitter. So in the past we were using actually Twitter, before Twitter got, uh, became X, and had more data we were using the same network analysis using twitter um, and so we shared some things it might not be relevant it might be relevant just check it and if it's relevant use some things from there if it's not relevant just you know you can you can ignore it so but let's stop for now here um, and i hope that everybody is in a better place now to understand what's going on um, and to start working on the on the project more than before so thank you everyone so basically we can stop the recording thanks everyone okay thanks Daniel. Ten academy team can you stop the recording <laughs>